Give me a minute and let's talk about Transnistria. Uh, Transnistria is about uh, this little tiny slip of land on the Dniester River, which is a branch of the Danube, uh, in Moldova. And it came up today because, like Ukraine, where the Donbass is the main industrial hub for the country and is occupied by the Russians since 2014, this little area in Moldova is also, curiously enough, the industrial hub where all the money gets made and has also been controlled by the Russians only since uh, 1990, right since the breakup of the Soviet Union. The Russians wrested control out of, of it from the Moldovans and have propped up a pro-Russian regime there that seeks unification with Russia. And the question came up today, how are the Russian soldiers in Moldova resupplied? And I thought that was a great question and I didn't have an answer. So I went and I did some reading. And there's a great article, among other things that I looked at today, there's a great article by Oleg Zadanov in the Odessa Journal from 2022, where he talks about this very issue of resupply of Russian forces in Moldova. Because there's no flights in there, there's no railroad in there, so how do they get resupplied? Two ways, just straight out shipping uh, under dual purpose, nothing comes in as military goods or hardware, but rather it comes in as dual purpose, nuts, bolts, keys, etc. right? Then you've got the Dniestra River, a uh, tributary of the Danube, and so uh, some goods and services can come in by boat. As far as the soldiers, how is rotation handled? Get this. The soldiers all get phony passports and come in as tourists. So the short answer to the question is, how do they get resupplied? They get resupplied covertly. Uh, Russia doesn't acknowledge the presence of these soldiers. A 2004 peace treaty would have made Russian soldiery a permanent fixture in Transnistria, and that doomed that peace accord. Um, this is just another great example of the way that the Kremlin subverts local governments for its own purposes. And its purposes should be clear to everybody by now. It's got no ideology. It's just looking to steal everything it can from the nations that it controls for itself. That kind of kleptocracy, that kind of self-indulgent gangsterism is a recipe for societal suicide. And we're watching it play out writ large in the hand of Vladimir Putin.